So I am very excited because I have with me today the Polish representative of Eurovision 2021, Rafael Brzozowski. So hi. Hello, it's a pleasure to you. And it was really great pr pronunciation of my uh, uh, surname, Brzozowski. <laughs> Wonderful, I'm shocked. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've rehearsed a lot. I've prepared to say, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I'm also grateful that you reduced your name just to Rafael for Eurovision because yeah. it makes things easier for us. Yeah, it's 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 about uh, an easier and uh, some kind of rememberable. Rafael the right, and it's short, and that was an idea for for that. Of course, Brzozowski uh, with B R Z is very hard in Polish. It's normal a uh, surname, but. Uh, but for you guys, oh, my it's, it's easier. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So okay. you're a singer, you're a television host, but what a lot of people in Spain don't know is that you were a wrestler when you were younger. So yeah. what made you choose the music path instead of keep on with the wrestling? Of course, it was from uh, because of history of my my father. He is a wrestler, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, from from since I was a kid, you know, I was on the uh, wrestling mat, and uh, I know all those wrestlers. They are my uncles, you know, Olympic champions. Uh, uh, so they know me from since I was a kid, uh, and it's obviously normally that uh, you are practicing this uh, the same sport as your father. And, uh, but I decided when, when I was just like 22 or 23 years old uh, and after bronze medal uh, of the, uh, but, but I was heavy, 96 kilo, my, my God, you know, I was, I was a big man. <laughs> I was studying there in the Academy of Physical Education, Warsaw. And uh, so I decided maybe to change this because the music was the, the second part of my life all the time. It was in, in, in the same time, in the meantime. So I decided maybe to change this into the music to become a professional musician. Maybe not a singer yet, yeah. but a, a musician. And I have some, a lot of injuries, you know, with the, my bags and legs mm -hmm. and everything with the sport. And I think that I, I'm, I'm not so good to be an uh, Olympic champion you know in the wrestling so you need to just go and go to the ground like in the uh, uh but never touch the ground just try try to go high and never touch the ground like in the right <laughs> so that's why i just i just changed that and i thought maybe about this second uh, line of my life and it become really great success for me and uh, also i have a lot of friends in wrestling i sing that for them on and many parties and many even European champions, uh, uh, and if, if you are hosting here uh, as a Poland, so thanks. That's that's it with with this wrestling uh, career. But you, uh, if you are a sportsman or ex sportsman, you have the spirit. You have the spirit for fighting, and you have the spirit that you know that not every competition you need to win. Uh, to be to to have a, a success. Maybe sometimes someday. Uh, if you lose, someday you can win, but you need to f uh, focus on that and think what goes wrong, what, what, what you can change in your life to, to have a success. That's the, that's the reason that the sports, it gives you some passions and your, your mind is focused on that purpose. I mean, that's a great mentality for Eurovision because like it's 40 <laughs> participants, but at the end there's only one winner. So you have to be open yeah. to face everything but remember the winner takes it all <laughs> <laughs> but you're also used to contest because you when you participated in uh, the voice 17. you also participated yeah. in dancing with the stars yes. which probably will help you with the dancing in in the ride uh, not so much not so much because the, the dancing with the stars was a uh, it's a different type of dancing uh, yeah. you know cha cha rum rumba waltz jive it's, uh, it's a little bit more like classic dancing but here it's modern dance and modern dance is different of course you need to dance with the music with the beat but if you're singing is bright staring not the neon sign a little bit a little bit back yeah. so it is hard to dance in a punch but you sing it not just because <laughs> so it's, it's crazy and it's fun. But you know, it was a lot of a lot of shows in my life and the competitions. First was the biggest show was uh, was the Voice. Uh, nobody knows the Voice. It was the second uh, because first Voice was in Holland and in the Netherlands, 
and then uh, the second was in Poland. So, and after that, everybody knows what is the wo- the voice, the, the biggest show in the world. You know, four chairs just, uh, uh, you know, turning around. You you have a one minute to be a star or not. And it's, what, and, you know? But now it's really uh, wonderful show. I'm thinking one of the the best shows in the uh, music industry. But now you're on the other side of the contest because you're a television host of several contests. You were in the Polish version of Fortune Wheel. And right now you're yeah. hosting the Polish version of Name That Tune and The Boy yeah. Senior. So yes. how is the difference and did participating in several contests help you to host better and to be like more empathetic with the contestants? Yeah, that's that's the reason they took me for uh, uh, for uh, the host of the Voice Senior. I'm first uh, Polish uh, contester uh, as a host, so I'm waiting. Uh, maybe they will propose me to to sit on the chair like, as a yeah. trainer to, to be the first one. But now uh, you you have absolutely right. I know what they feel. I know they're stressy. I know what they are thinking in their mind. So I'm trying to explain them. Don't worry, guys. It's not about just that you need to be uh, now the winner of the show. The winner is the guy who after the show gives you the music, had their own music, not the covers, not maybe. Of course, you got a big, um, you, your name is famous and you have a lot of uh, fans in very, very short time. Your, your accounts uh, on Facebook, YouTube channels or Instagram, just the people love you and they want to ask but after six months there's another show and you need to be prepared to give your music so i'm trying to explain them and help them with this uh and uh, hosting is also uh, a big inspiration for me and uh, it gives me growth with with my uh, ability of uh, performing on stage because you have a sense and feeling of the camera and if you are live and you know that it's three, four, five million people watching you and you need to say, hello, Europa, are you ready for the rock and roll? All right, let's go after this commercial right now. So, but but it's really different. Now I'm just really happy and excitement because I'm getting back to my work as a musician. And this is really, you know, it's about the passion, about emotion and not, not only just staying on the stage and say, hello, everyone. It's also very hard, but... I love music. I'm a musician and uh, this is my life. So going back to music, to this year's yeah. Eurovision, how, because there was, we had a lot of rumors coming from Poland, a lot of names popped up and yours only came up like the last few weeks before you were announced. How was the whole process behind the doors? How, when did they told you like, you are going to Eurovision? Of course, I tried to explain that. It's about the regulations in this year. It's something really strange happened because of the pandemic situation. Uh, EBU decided to um, to uh, to cancel uh, 2020 yeah. Eurovision Song Contest and uh, to give this uh, all the information in 2021 in Rotterdam. But they they uh, say about those artists which they uh, participate in and the song contest need to change the songs. You need to create a new song. You, you can't go with your song from 2020. So this is strange, but they do that. They, they just did that. And uh, because of the pandemic, uh, uh, Polish TV, which is um, the member of the European Broadcasting Union, uh, um, they can also make a, a show and competitions for that, or they can choose from they own uh choose with the you know with the artists that they want to go so uh they will try to speak with several artists like five six seven persons and they just uh, ask for the songs and nobody knows that we just have a rumors uh you know around who is going to be and suddenly one day they just asked me because i was preparing my album for 10 years of my university of solo career because voice was 2011 i started there so in this year was that and i was soon, uh, happy for autumn this year for my album and i prepared a few singles full single songs and in polish but i uh, decided to to do with this 
like uh, 10 university for my experience. I'm from 80s. I love these sounds. It's really modern right now. It's retro. So I decided to look for the song like that. I composed one and I um, spoke with my friends, with the managers and also composers from Sweden, from Sweden, uh, Thomas Carson. We uh, we've met like four years ago and we tried to combine with one project. So I, I asked him, do you have a retro song like sounds in 80s? Yeah, we got some something. If you if you like it, you can you can do something with that. And then I sent this proposition when they asked me, do you have the song for, for like, uh, like uh, you know, uh, a powerful song, uh, an energy song, dancing song. We, we want to have this in this year. We don't have, a, we don't want to have a ballad because people are staying at home. They are sitting in house. So that now it's a pandemic situation. Let's do, let's dance, let's show. Okay, so I send that and they say, all right, can you sing this? In your version, of course. So I went to the studio and just I just sing that very fast. Two days, three days, you're in. I said, "Oh my God!" So something incredible. And I you know, of course, there's a lot of rumors. They talk, "Why you go be, not this uh, Alicia or what?" I say, I'm, "I don't know." It, they just took my my song and they, uh, and I'm so happy for that. Uh, it's uh, I'm nervous, I'm happy, but I'm excitement. Back to business, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and, uh, oh, no, sorry, your, if I'm if, yeah. if I'm talking too much, just just uh, just uh, please just say stop and <laughs> no, shut that, up. It's perfect. Our... I, I love it. <laughs> so, what was your first impression of the ride when you first heard it? Like you were like, "This is the one." Yes, or... yes. This is exactly this is exactly what I uh, what I tried to explain. What I tried to explain to you that I'm I was looking for a song w with the retro sounds, like eighty sounds, with the modern uh, technology right now old classic sounds with the modern uh, mixed and beats. Uh, so uh, I love The Weeknd, um, uh, uh, I Feel It Coming, Blinding Lights, and now it's really uh, Dua Lipa also yeah. the songs, uh, the productions. So I say, this is, this is what I like. I was waiting for 80s in the music, but in the modern way. So first, I was impressed really, really a lot uh, of this song, but I was waiting for my voice with this because, you know, singing live is different. And of course, I, I've seen this song live and it sounds different. In a production, you need to do that in the, some kind of a way that's in, a, in the business right now. Uh, so uh, I said, all right, if you mix that, okay, <laughs> let's do, <laughs> let's do that. And I don't. I know you can tell us much about the staging, but is it going to be a similar concept to the video, like with all the neon lights? With which we know that there's going to be five male dancers with you. So yes. what can you tell us about how the performance is going to be? Exactly four dancers and uh, one background vocal, and uh, of course we uh, try to do different choreography. Uh, it's really different choreography, like in the. A video but the spirit is similar we can take our museum of neons from 80s which is really cool <laughs> and really uh, excitement uh because it's a part of polish history uh i remember those days when i was just watching for the neons like it was like modern wow it's shocky because it was a strange situation uh, in Polish uh, history in the period of time that everything was gray and dark, you know, and, and suddenly you have uh, a big neons uh, colored. So I think with the visualization, we got the spirit and we need to, uh, we need to go into something, but it's, it's different. Uh, my um, stage look with the sunglasses, everything is just like set up, but it will be one, uh, one, uh, uh, moment that I can just yeah. take the glasses off and say hello Europe and <laughs> that's what I like <laughs> so there's your choreographer which is Agustine Currola he said yeah. that you've been training a lot on your dancing and on your singing are you going to dance a lot, to dance a lot during the performance or is it going to be more like movements yeah I think uh, we are practicing dancing and movements because uh, I'm not feeling comfortable with this because of hosting and being, you know, like all the time not in the move. And what I need to have is uh, this sense of music still with your body. 
and of course dancers are dancers but if you are uh compared with some movements with this and uh, the with the few shots with the choreography with the cameras it getting it give it gives you uh, uh a power and energy so you can't just move like you know wrestler you need to move like a, you need to move like like Jagger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's, so, it's, it's yeah. about this to feel to feel emotions with the, and the beats with your legs and the, all the body to to move you like be smooth and the, and gentle and with all your uh, structure muscles different way. And if you feel that, it's really more easy to to sing and dancing um, together. And so, have you taped already the backup performance, or are you working? Yes, on of it? course. Yes, of yeah. course. Yes, of course. We did it uh, in Saturday. Uh, we had only three days for, for preparation yeah. for that. It was a hard work and a lot of yeah. information. But I was really happy that I have experience with the cameras because you need to remember all the auto cue sense yeah. scenes in your mind. What it's you know this 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 way singing dancing standing and uh, blah, 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 lights <laughs> don't push that light system. Okay, so it was funny. It was really and I, I'm uh, really uh, I'm really happy for that. And I think it was really quite good. A really really great uh, performing. But uh, I am really uh, wait. I'm waiting for the Rotterdam because then it, there is a stage and there's a big stage and I just want to have a fun. Just want to have a fun and dance and sing and say, hello, Europe, let's ride. Let's ride. That's it. <laughs> so, but this is not your first experience in Eurovision because you were selected up as part of the Poly Jury in 2019. Yeah. And how was that experience like? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, um, so this it, it was a great challenge, and uh, I've seen the preparations and the rehearsals. So uh, it was really strange for me because we we judge on Friday, but the the people vote uh, vote uh, they they were they were vo voting in Saturday. So when I look, I'm sorry. Uh, when I looked on the TV uh, in Saturday. Uh, I say to myself, all right, this guy sings better today. Yesterday he was worse, today he's better. But the, guy, the team that I give them 12 points, it's not so good today, for example. And you say, oh, yeah, so it's kind of stressy. If they feel the people and the, they feel the power on the stage, sometimes they are getting better, you know. And But what you can do about it? Nothing. It's just, it's, um, it's very... Uh, uh, you need to be, uh, you need to do a lot of repeats and repeats of your song and your show. So I said, mm -hmm. so it's like this. You need to be ready for five, six days of singing your yeah. song every day, 100%, no, 110%, 120%. It's, that is easy. So it was great experience to see that, how they, they rehearse, they have the rehearsals and how they are prepared for that. So your highest scores were to Australia and to Serbia. So what elements yeah. did you take into consideration while evaluating and ranking all the songs? I love uh, the Australia performing the the idea of, of singing. You know, they were in the sky, just yeah. like just just the, the girls were in the sky with the beautiful dress, and it's really uh, it was a little bit classic element with singing. <laughs> So, you know, singing in this position with a microphone or this microphone is really uh, heavy. I know that it's technical heavy. So, so that's why I, I say, all right, so this is a great idea. There's something new. I haven't seen that before. And they sing perfectly. That's why my points goes to Australia. Uh, oh, because... And now I, uh, I, even after many years, I will remember that song and I will remember that performing. So this is what I want to, to, to do to maybe create, uh, create some look of you that people recognize you. Oh, this is Ruffle from yeah. the right. Okay. Oh, this is this guy. Okay. We remember him. Uh, so, uh, you know, the idea of, the, of your look and the, the song is really important in Eurovision Song Contest.
And what can you tell us about how the process of the juries goes? Like, how do you watch the performances? Are you all together in a room? Are you able to talk among each other? Is there some yes. external pressure or how so you so, so you want uh, a lot of information from me, you know, how to... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I have to take advantage since you're here. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry because, uh, you know, uh, I'm here to tell you about it. This is really, I have experience with that, so I can tell you. Uh, of course, we are sitting in the uh, one big room or studio. We were sitting in studio because the, was, the, um, um, the contest was in Tel Aviv. So we, we watched that exactly. Uh, on the big screens with the big, you know, um, PMs, and we heard the music really clear. And of course, we have a, a writing. I, I'm just not quite sure if I have this because I got my list, you know, with the writing here, with the points. Uh, and so, uh, of course, we can talk to each other. I had uh, friends there. One manager, big manager in po Polish industry. Uh, why I'm a great singer, Anja Vyskoni, it was a uh, blue cafe with me and uh, a few bands and and a uh, few journalists. So, of course, you decide your points by yourself, only yourself. And we were not just, like, okay, how much point do you give to this? No, no, we were uh, just uh, doing uh, by itself. But uh, you feel that who who is going to be and what is the best way sometimes we we say all right we were voting for this guy or this uh, this country but uh people votes for another artist so they love him or, or that and if you see on the uh judge scores you can see the difference many times that you, that some of the countries they are really high in the judge voice but after the after the people voting, it's really changed. Yeah. So it's uh, you, you can you don't know what ha what will happen, uh, and this is so uh, emotional con uh, contest for all the people for all the artists because they didn't expect what is going on. Even if the bookmakers give you high notes. You can be there if they, they give you just uh, that you are on the end. Suddenly something happened. They say, wow, why? Why is that? We didn't give a points for that. And to keep on to this last year, you were the host of Junior Eurovision 2020. It was a very yeah. special edition with all the coronavirus. There wasn't live performances. Yes. You were like on a studio, basically all by yourself with a little bit of audience. How was the experience of hosting a Eurovision event? Uh, it was a great honor to be uh, one of the hosts with my beautiful friends, Ida Wakoska and Małgosia. Uh, so Małgosia is a journalist and Ida is a dancer and host uh, and the host. So uh, uh, we have a great fun. We have a great time. We've learned a lot. We've met a people. We met a people from EBU, Martin Osterdal. We talk about it. I, even I talk with Martin and Gert, and they ask me, "You are a singer, yes, yes. Why you didn't compete compete uh, in the Euro Eurovision? I was in 2017, but you don't want me. I was a second. <laughs> no, we not we. The people from your country they don't want you because you were second. Uh, so maybe next year. And I say, uh, I don't know. It's all about the music. So it was a great experience and great fun. And we were so happy. And of course, um, the big biggest problem was that we didn't have an audience. Uh, of course, in this final uh, edition, uh, we have some people, and it was really great because they love to scream and talk about it. Uh, it everything was in a, like technical uh, connections, connections, connections. There was a lot of problem with uh, the connections because we tried to. Uh, for example, ask them a few words, uh, how, what you were going to do if you win the contest, for example, to the contestors. And he, he just look at you and don't hear you. And, uh, but they wanted, uh, uh, for example, <clears throat> measure the time because you have 40 seconds to repeat yeah. that. And we, we can't just do that like one by one. 
it was just only one day before. So it was a lot of things changing, but for me, great experience, great moment. And uh, if you say, good evening, Europe, uh, very well, welcome to Poland, the capital city of, uh, uh, and, and the capital city, Warsaw. So it was a great uh, feeling that everybody uh, is, uh, they are online with you and they're watching you. And it was a lot of, lot of people, millions of people uh, in front of the TV. So who were your favorites from Junior Eurovision? Junior? Besides Paula. Oh, pa <coughs> yeah, <laughs> Ala was great and she was really pretty great. But, you know, of course, the, the difference is that you can vote on your country. So this yeah. is different in Junior Eurovision. Here is not. I see something strange. Of course, Palante, Palante, our favorite <laughs> song. Jimaji, da da di da da di da di da Jimaji. So we have a lot of fun there with those contesters. Really crazy. And uh, the kids were great, wonderful, and uh, it was a great fun. <laughs> so ha have you heard the songs this year, your competitors? Yes, of course. Not everyone, but a lot of that. I'm really surprised. There's a lot of ballads this year, really, uh, great ballads. I love uh, Switzerland and his song. This, this guy is amazing. His voice sounds great, but if he sings live the same, oh, I will be <laughs> impressed. Really, really nice songs and some kind of nice, um, even a video clip uh, with um, some, some purpose and idea uh, of the life. Um, uh, San Marino, great song, France. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of nice songs, uh, but a lot of ballads. And I was curious, why a lot of ballads this year? Because people want to have fun, I think. They, they, they wait for a big concert to dance, to sing. But I don't know, it's, uh, it's fun that, and really I'm excited. I feel excitement there. Uh, that uh, you are a part of something big and you try to you but you know what uh, we are really waiting for the Rotterdam because if you send your tracks and then you so you were staying at studio in the world so you don't feel this power you don't feel this energy with the other artists I know this pandemic situation is very hard I know that I, I had a COVID but for a, a, a fortunately, nothing happened with that. So, uh, you know, mm, it's a strange situation, but you need to feel the energy of the stage. And the Eurovision has a, the, the greatest stage, I think, in yeah. this part of your <laughs> world. So, to finish the interview, do you know our website is a forum where a lot of users leave their comments about all the Eurovision songs? It's all about and, this, you know, it's yeah. uh, modern life. You need to comment and need to say <laughs> something that you are great or not. <laughs> so I wanted to show you two of the comments that our users made. One good and one not that good. Okay. So you can respond directly to them and you can tell them anything you want. Of so, course, of course. I'm ready. You want to, you want to begin with the good one or the bad one? It's, it doesn't matter. I like the... Uh, I like to, to answer uh, any questions, even the bad one, <laughs> whatever, so come on. I will begin with the bad one, so we finish with a good one. No, so let's do the another one, another way. <laughs> the, the good one first? Yeah, the good one first is good. Okay, wait, I'm going to change it. So Because I'm, I'm still happy, you know, I'm still happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the good one, I'm yeah. gonna, that is a message, but I'm going to translate it. So yes. it says... Where is that neon factory? I want to leave my curriculum now. It must be fantastic to work there. Wonderful. The song is so smooth. It is nice to listen. And I like letting myself go to it. I love Rafael too. And I am very thankful because I'm liking a lot of the songs of this year. Thank you, heart emoji. Uh, but what was the first uh, first sentence? You, can you repeat me the first that, sentence? What that, were... he, that he loved the neon factory. Well, neon factory. Which ah, is actually factory. The museum. Neon factory. Oh, he loved the oh, media. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so thank you for that, and I'm really, uh, I'm really happy. And uh, uh, the museum factory factory is uh, in Warsaw. This is a neon factory. It's really classic, and you can see a lot of uh, Polish um, industry in this period of time. Uh, so even not even exists anymore. 
uh, and it's you feel this this 80s uh, lifestyle and and this 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 passion so it's a kind of classic uh, museum in poland and you can go there and you can buy a ticket and just watch what what is in inside so thank you for that um, uh, and i really i enjoy that you like this video uh with this but he also like this song <laughs> yeah he but also said he like this song and you yeah. Yeah. The the song is the song is uh, uh, with with the neons with the ideas of that modern technology and the uh, 80s with those neons. So it's really uh, something good together. I'm I'm happy that he he feel, feels the power of the music and he likes that and maybe try to sing with me on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> so now to go to the other one, which is all right. Good. Let's go. All so right. This one says. I think this song is pretty bad, and he has between zero and minus three, three, two, three, seven, two, 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 six, three, five, two charisma. I don't see him going to the final. What do you have to say to this juicer? So, so this is like a P, uh, uh, or three point seven four four three three three. He, he two, says two, that you. <laughs> he, he he was saying that that's your level of charisma. So. Oh, okay. Uh, look, you you can uh, you you can have your uh, opinion, of course, and I uh, I respect that. It's always like that that you, if you don't like it, so what else I can say? I can greet you and hug you and say maybe in Rotterdam you will like my perform. And uh, <laughs> thank you so much for that. But I never, uh, I need to remember that minus charisma minus zero three two two <laughs> seven zero. What is what was that? Okay, I'll try to remember. It's really really great idea. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you very much for this interview, and I wish you the best of luck in Rotterdam. I hope we see you all on the stage over there. And of I, course, of course, yeah. yeah. It was really, it will be really great fun, and thank you so much for the interview. Uh, it was a pleasure and great, great fun to to talk with you. Uh, and um, I'll try to uh, greet all the, your viewers and hug you and send a lot of love and passion from Poland to all the Eurovision fans. I know it's a big contest to you, and you're uh, really waiting for that. We are waiting, and all musical industry is still waiting. And let's ride in Europe this year. <laughs>